Good morning from Panhandle Outdoors, America's only daily outdoor TV show. Your source for fishing, hunting, and information for folks who enjoy the great outdoors. Now sit back, relax. It's Panhandle Outdoors. Good morning, folks. Welcome to Panhandle Outdoors. I'm Winston Chester. I'm glad you're here this morning. Got a big show lined up, but first, let's take care of our weather. High 87, low down 72, and water temperature is 80. Two degrees. We've been pretty steady, and I've heard some good reports from from folks just doing some just general fishing. They're catching all kinds of you know what people call trash fish. I I think fish are fish, and uh, it might be trash to some people, but uh, you know, people can uh, can eat them somewhere. So anyway, I, I slow down on the bonito and stuff like that's real bloody. That's the kind of food you, uh, you want to smoke. So always keep that in mind. I get I always get a kick out of how people prepare their fish. You know, one time redfish. Well, nobody wanted redfish at all. And then Chef Paul Prudhomme in the 80s over in New Orleans, you all know the story, he started blackening the redfish. The reason to blacken it was to take the fishy taste out of it, and it just swept the nation. And then it caused us to have a redfish shortage. And so uh, you, can, uh, you can prepare it anyway, but smoking and, and blackening fish like that is good. And I just I do my mullet. I love mullet, uh, fried and smoked. All right, let's move on. I start talking about fishing first thing. Our river readings brought to you by Mountain Dew. Get out and do. We're looking at Appalachia at a blunt sound at an 8.6. It's in good shape here, and also the Charter Edge Care Bill, 3.5. So again, like I said yesterday, the weekend looking really good for getting out on the river. Our tide chart brought to us by Kent Forest Lawn, right here on 23rd Street. High is 7.32 a.m. and low tonight at 6.07. Tide's going out all day, and the wind's going to be south southeast at about eight. So it's going to looks like a really pretty day today. It's going to be really nice again. Uh, as I mentioned yesterday, this coming Saturday will be the longest day of the year. So take advantage of all this daylight and all. And I ran, I ran to some boys the other day. They were at the end, what I call the end of our our road. There is a kayak launch and a, a little fishing area, and they could call some bait. And it was about. About six o'clock, I was riding my bicycle, ran down there, and I, anytime I see somebody down around the water, I like to just talk to them, see what's up, and I, I knew the boys, uh, and they, they're in their 30s now, but hey, coach, we just, we got here after work and all, but we can't stay too long, because our wives gonna, wives want us to get home. Will you say something on the show that tell our wives to let us stay out a little bit longer to catch some fish, so well, I pass the word on. I don't want to call out their names, but wives, please be understanding if your husband going after work to catch some fish, and I'll give them an hour or two, Go catch that fish and bring them home. All right, uh, let's let's take a break. We'll be right back. Welcome back. I didn't get to finish this story the other day. I want to go ahead and, and get the pictures and everything. I showed you the the turkey call that Bimbo Miller presented to me as a gift as part. He made, hand made it, hand carved it, and from the Ocean Queen, the timbers from the Ocean Queen. And uh, we talked about it. And I showed that to you, but I brought it, brought, brought it back today so I can finish the story because I couldn't pull up the pictures because I want to give you the complete story. Let's look at the pictures. This this is the Ocean Queen right here, and it was being, this is on Miller Boat Yard after Hurricane Michael, and uh, they, uh, Mike and Bimbo, they want to save that, they want to save that boat so bad, but there's no way they could do it. And uh, in fact, there's Gail filming, and uh, they were tearing it, they were tearing it apart right there, crushing it, and uh, this is really a, a heart-wrenching to the, the, you know, a lot, a lot of guys that had been around it and had a, had a lot of a uh, history with it and all. So we, uh, we got that on video, not that we're proud of it, just to uh, just store our history. Here at Bimbo, uh, I'm at Mandy and Megan's office, and he, he stuck his head in the door and said, I got something for you. So he's he playing with it right there, explaining it to me. Of course, I'm just tickled. And uh, I said, we've got to pose for this picture now. This is going to be a classic. So, <laughs> so thank you again, Bimbo Miller. And here, here are the pictures. And the reason I want to, I want to show you uh, uh, and here, this is in Grover Davis's, the other, two of the other Queen fleet, in Grover Davis's front yard, right there in Robinson Bayou. He had them anchored up and everything. It busted ankle, broke the ankle because, you know, the wind came out of north uh, and they were expecting to come out of south. And it just blew those up against the uh, water and they had, to, they had to scuttle those. So that was a uh, heart and soul of the old original Queen fleet. And so for Bimbo to save some of that, and here's the ocean, actual Ocean Queen itself. This is a page in my book. And the guy on the far right, that is Mike Miller. That's Bimbo's brother, Mike Miller on the far right. Right next to him is the late Richard Holly. 
and back in the younger days, and and uh, that, and you can see the size of the fish all the way around the boat. That was some special times, and this is part of our heritage, and that's why it's so important to uh, to save this. And this story here, I want to go uh, on the second from the latest second from your right, okay. That is Mike and, and Bimbo's mom. That's George Davis in the middle. That's George Davis' daughter. So you see the family tie. Okay, I'm going to show you one more picture. Let's see. Right here, this is her as a teenager working on, on her daddy's boat on the Davis Queen Fleet. She so worked in the galley. I got to interview her and spend some good quality time. This is Mandy and Megan's grandmother. But I want to go back to this picture here. Uh, I'm sorry. This, let's go to this picture right here. I want, I want to tell you this story about this picture because uh, I'd heard the story. This this picture was taken right after, uh, in, in the late late forties, after World War II. When the war ended, you keep in mind now. This sounds familiar. Tyndall had, of course, closed the the, air, the whole area was closed. So Davis Beach had been closed. Everything had been closed. Well, when the war, nobody done any fishing for like four to five years in that area, and the guy on the far right uh, had, had was at Tyndall. He was stationed at Tyndall. So he, he knew how the Davis family liked to fish, and uh, I think uh, he, he got a hold of them and, uh, and through, through a man, his grandmother, took them and let, had the key. I heard the story now because it was really cool. Took the key, opened the gate. He legally did this now because he was part of the Tyndall. I, I forget what year, I want to say 46, 47, but that was the first time that Crooked Island Sound, and I know a lot of y'all fish that area, but can you imagine? It's the first time it had been fished since the war had started in the early 40s. So he got, he took him in there. He knew that uh, Captain Davis knew how to fl flounder fish because he loved to flounder fish. Can you imagine having Crooked Island uh, closed for like four to five years and then you'd be the first one in there? And just, so that, that picture, uh, we'll go back to uh, that picture. Look at the size of those flounder came out of, out of off, off the boat land. I know a lot of you folks in Bluntstown and all over Panhandle like to come down to Davis Beach, and it's one of our secrets. There's not a secret anymore. But anyway, that's the story behind that picture. And I just think that's classic. And again, uh, this is, uh, of course, Captain uh, Davis that started the, the fleet, and uh, that's his three boys, Grover, uh, uh, that's Duck, Grover, and Joe Ed, in that order right there. And that, that was down in St. Andrew. So that's the story. That's the story behind that. Behind, that's why I want to show you all this. This came off the timbers. And George Davis built, built his first boat, and I mentioned this before. Where did he get the name of Queen this and Queen that? And it, it came from a watermelon seed. <laughs> he, loved, he was a backyard uh, farmer. He liked to grow crops and uh, vegetables in his backyard, loved to grow watermelons. His favorite watermelon was a Dixie Queen. A Dixie Queen, a little watermelon seed like that. It, was, it grows really good in, in Georgia and Alabama and, and, and North Florida. So that's how. That's the story on the Queen fleet. That's the story on on the uh, Ocean Queen turkey call and made by Bimbo Miller. So I just want to give you more detail on it than I did the other day. All right, let's take a break and we'll be right back. Okay, welcome back. I want, I want to show you, let, let's go and show you a picture so you know who I'm talking about when, when we, uh, this, is, this is our buddy Ch Chase Smith. You know, we're talking about one of my former students. Uh, he's at Baylor University. He's flexing my muscles after successfully defending my dissertation, Dr. Smith. This is Chase that's been on the show. He was our quarterback at Mosley. He took the outdoor ed class, loved the outdoors, and pursued a career. If you remember when he was on, when he was on, we actually, uh, he was at the University of Florida getting his master's degree, and they were studying the bear movement. Remember, he came on and talked about trapping bears and DNA and, and you know, looking at the hair of them, see which bear it was. And so he pursued that career. He just kept on going, and he had to find something uh, to do, uh, you know, some, some kind of dissertation to do, and it was the muscles. And he started actually doing something on the Alabama rivers, but he ended up out in Texas at Baylor. Well, I got this, I got this from his mom, Coach Winston Chester. And uh, she sent me an article he had done. He just had to, had to, he got to do articles and all. That's the lifeblood of you know being at college, work at a college level. He, he taught he taught underclassmen there at Baylor while he worked on his doctoral. But he just defended it. She sent me the nicest little note. In fact, I think I'll read it to you. It's real short. Coach Chester, again, thank you for being such a wonderful mentor to Chase all of these years. Thank you for putting up with his mama. His mama was very very supportive of Chase, and what a what a great lady. She was a teacher herself. Uh, as of this date, uh, Chase has published eight articles and continues to write. He has 
submitted his final dissertation. This is right before his dissertation. He defended it, and then he will finally graduate with a PhD, and now he's Dr. Smith. I, when I call Roll, I just said Chase. But now I have to call him Dr. Smith. He's on his po postdoc position. He will be working ne next at the University of Texas in Austin, so he'll be a Longhorn. And uh, he's got a baby on the way, and uh, all excited. I hope your family's doing well, uh, Cammy. Uh, Chase's grandparents on his mom's side, they're from Mariana, and his grandparents on his dad's side from Bonifay. So he has that, those panhandle roots here, and he just loved, he just loved, uh, loved the outdoors. He just had a passion for it. I'm so glad he can now make a career out of doing some things in outdoor. And I read this, I, I, I didn't, didn't read it, I looked at this article. Folks, it, you're talking about another language or something, but it, it's amazing. I have a new, new respect for people working on a doctoral degree and, and research and all, and, and the words they have to use, it's, it's, sort of, it's sort of out of my league. So uh, anyway, congratulations, Chase. We're so proud of you. And what, what we want to do now, when he gets back into town, we're going to get him to come on the show come on the show again, okay? Let's move on, we got all kinds of stuff. How about, I love stories, I love stories with the pictures, okay. Uh, this is coming from uh, Lord Estes. Uh, my nephew, Garrett Duggar, is an avid fisherman in McClenny. Right, that's down between, uh, close to Jacksonville and Gainesville. We got to give him a good taste of saltwater fishing when he stayed with us the past two weeks. My daughter, Brindley, and Garrett say monster black drum near our dock and dedicated every hour of daylight to fishing for the entire two weeks. After Garrett had been here for a week, it all paid off when he landed this 30 pound black drum. Let's get a, let's get a picture of it right here. here. Here's a picture of him fishing, okay? It's over in North Shore. Check it out, folks. Right there in the canal. That is a fine drum. And you're talking about persistence pays <laughs> How about that? I know that would be a memory, literally a memory of a lifetime right there. And they waited right there to make a 30 pound black drum. So good job. Good job the whole crew right there. Okay, now I got, I got another uh, story I want to show you. This, this comes from my friends over in Santa Rosa County, some viewers over there. My husband and I enjoy watching your show. He is a charter guide in Grayton Beach. We had a last minute cancellation yesterday and were able to get out and do some fishing. Uh, it, it's really neat that, uh, that you can do, you know, do something like that. I wanted to share this monster snapper I pulled in. She measured 35 and a half inches, weighed in at 26 pounds. The biggest snapper I've caught in state, state waters now by far. But check it out. Is that not a monster red snapper? What some great pictures there. Jen, thank you for sending these. And this is the, uh, I'll show you the address in a second. I just want to show, show you these pictures. They're now pointing, I don't know, I don't know who's more proud. Uh, both of them are, are, have a lot of credit to do. Uh, we're, we're catching this, I know. Uh, here, it is, here it is coming up out, out of the water. Okay, and then uh, it, it's a charter, it's a, uh, I see, I got a picture here, Jeff. Let me uh, go back down here to it. The, uh, the charter group. Mm, right here. This is this is our charter group right here. It's a Great and Girl Fishing Charters over there in uh, Walton County, and uh, they they uh, do all kind of fishing. It looks like I look at some pictures. Look, look like they have a, a Cape Horn there. So uh, all right. So we got we got took took care of that one. Uh, let's see. I also wanted uh, this morning. I want to show one more picture. This is my my neighbor up there in Southport. Uh, Ernie Regadio, and uh, he sent me he sent me a picture. Uh, they caught this. Isn't that a great picture? He caught this the other morning. Good job, Ernie. See, we got a we got a little uh, got a little message with it too. But anyway, they they caught their limit. They caught their limit of snapper. They caught their limit of snapper. He and his uh, I think son-in-law and a group of them had gone out. Caught their limit of snapper. And that was on top of everything to catch a, a mahi mahi like that. And uh, Ernie's a great guy, great fisherman, works out there at Tyndall. People wonder how in the world we're going to do a whole, uh, whole show every day. And, and you know, it, the reason is because y'all keep sending these pictures, y'all keep catching these fish and keep sharing these stories. How, you know, how can we do a whole show on the outdoors this often? So uh, that's, that's one of the reasons. So good job, Ernie. Uh, again, the Red Snapper Report, we're going to talk about, talk about this tomorrow in a fishing report. It's been really strong. 
the midweek report, uh, you know, it got a little bit windy and a little bit of what they call uh, choppy out there. And, and uh, the, the fishing, though, has been excellent. All kind of some nice rest now for being brought in. So and you can see on here. We're going to take our final break and we'll be right back. Okay, welcome back. Let's take a look at our fishing game time today, brought to us by Blue Water Outriggers in Port St. Joe. We're looking at 10.51 to 12.51, right here in the middle of the day. And tonight, 11.15 uh, to 1.15, that's about a 12-hour swing right there. I haven't, speaking of night, I haven't seen a lot of uh, flounder reports yet because the wind really hasn't been laying that much at night. So I know some folks are out there floundering, but I haven't got a lot of reports. And uh, summertime, especially as we get into... Uh, late summer floundering really starts kicking off uh, pretty strong so keep it posted on that uh, there's one one other picture i wanted to show you this is just a picture this is brian revere sent this to me this, he's in his backyard working with his two daughters on shooting a gun okay and uh, let me tell you the background of this and it, this came off when i was talking about a bb gun uh situation about you know shooting out aluminum cans and all that he he commented on my post and I, Brian, Brian is a principal at Vernon High School. I've mentioned the name often on here and was in that first outdoor class I had and, and a, a consummate outdoorsman in uh, woods and water. And I, I just love, uh, I need to get him to come back on the show. He's stay so busy though, but he's been on before. But anyway, he, he wrote this long, you see right here, I'm, I'm not gonna read the whole thing, but he, uh, a couple of weeks ago, as a follow up from our, this event, okay, okay, you remember, you may remember the story about a guy who ditched a vehicle and fled on foot while being pursued by law enforcement. It all unfolded on our road in our immediate area. We were gone and the girls were home all alone. Due to this day and how it left me feeling, we practiced a bit more today. I never keep this firearm loaded. Uh, he went on down here to say that they just, uh, we discuss how Let's go to the top of the page right here. We discuss how it's very unfortunate sometimes things can find their way to us when we least suspect them. So he taught them about 12 to 15 yards, which is that, that's something important. Teach your target, you know, someone's intruding and all, it's going to be about 12 to 15 yards. And, uh, and it goes on to speak of, uh, now you see, okay, uh, anyway, what, what happened, the, the guy was running from the law and actually ended up in a driveway. Brian and his wife were off and the girls home, like I said, home alone. And you can imagine how that makes you feel as a parent, even though uh, they had target practice and all. He just sort of, he said he just kicked it up, wrapped it up a little bit, and let and explained to them how to do it. And he had a little bit of video. I won't show the video. It's just I don't uh, have it on as far as getting it technically done. Not that I wouldn't want to show it, but if you get a chance to uh, to look at it, Brian's post, it's really good. And he had he just had folks target had had a, a body up there and just shooting at it. And again. Uh, you stop and think about that situation. Uh, you have a kid's home and, and uh, somebody running from the law. And so that, that's two incidents that happened right here in the Panhandle, right? People we know, good, good uh, law-abiding citizens and all, that a bad guy has come up and, uh, and having a weapon is just, you know, is so important. So uh, anyway, uh, I just want you to be aware of those things will happen, okay? Now, let's move on. We've got, uh, I, I do want to mention, I got one more. I got another picture. Bob Bilsma, Levon, Lottie by Levon. They, okay. We, we love those morning pictures. Now we know. How do we know it's in the morning? How, how, why is that not a sunset or sunrise? Because it looks like to me they're pulling out of Apalachicola Bay, and the sun is rising behind them. And they had a great, they had a great trip. And actually, this picture looks like it's taken. I think they left out of Howard Creek. That's Bob on the far left. And uh, just just uh, good stuff right there. So good job, Bob Bills. Now this next uh, email I got from John and Laura McCarter, hey Winston, enjoyed meeting you at Blue Water Outriggers Saturday. Here's some information about Ballpoint State Park. It has lots of hiking trails, a fishing pier, beaches, and more. We watch Panhandle Outdoors every day. I need help throwing a cast net. John and Laura McCarter. So uh, let me tell you, I ran into them. What well, was cool? I, uh, first time I'd been by Blue Water since the pandemic and I, I just needed to check with them and we sort of kept our social distance and, and we had a, and these folks walked in and uh, hey, coach, we watched your show and I talked to him. It was, it was he and his wife and some friends. And guess why they were going to Blue, and they were down like in around Carabell, actually Alligator Point, which is below Carabell. And they'd come up uh, to, to uh, Blue Water and guess what they were looking for? Something they heard on the show. When Greg and Bill were talking the other day, 
about that Paul Brown lure, and they'd come up there, and sure enough, they had some at Blue Water. So that was a win-win situation. But he sent me the map. Now, I think John is a retired pharmacist, as he told me. Uh, Ball Point State Park. This is a little hiking. This is down around Alligator Point. And it's just, I, I, I'll be honest with you now, I haven't been there. <laughs> Believe it or not, it's just a little... I get side. If I started at Ball Point, it'd take me three days to get there because I'd get sidetracked at Tate's Hill or at the Cape and all kind of other places I'd go to. But that is, look at all the hiking trails there. I was really impressed. And then it gave the, the little folder. This is the folder, Ball Point State Park, hiking trail information. And this is, uh, it tells you actually the loop. Look at all, the, all these, all these are little hiking trails. Now look at that Tucker Loop, 6.3 miles. So you better be ready for that. Uh, and go around Tucker Lake, and uh, anyway, really neat stuff. And this is what this is what we talk about with our state park system, and and being able to do that, all kind of things. Now I want to uh, I want to bring up. I don't. I'm going to run out of time, but right here, I got asked yesterday. In fact, I went and talked to one of someone's house, and we talked about it. Uh, the outdoor recreational program at at Tyndall. I, I keep getting mixed messages and all. Uh, they, they closed it. I've shown this before. Davis Beach is closed, supposedly, right there. Now, am I reading this right? Uh, it's issued a public health emergency order. Uh, all permit sales are suspended and all that. Now, and, and, but I, like I said, I went by Davis Beach the other day and counted 13, 13 actual boat trailers out there. So uh, we get mixed signals. I'm going to try to call them and see exactly how, uh, what's going on and how we need to, uh, to do it, but really the bottom line, we gotta find out more information on them developing it. It's sort of been swept under the table real quick. We hadn't, uh, it came out then boop, we can't find out anything else about it. That's something folks, we as outdoorsmen gotta stay on top of. I promise you, uh, if we don't, it's gonna, it's gonna get out of hand as far as developing a Tyndall Air Force Base for commercial use. Okay, we run out of time, we got a big show tomorrow, we give away some seafood, have a great day, do something good for your fellow man, and God bless. Thanks for watching America's only daily outdoor TV show, Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester, featuring hunting, fishing, and other activities and information to help you enjoy the great outdoors. Join us next time for Panhandle Outdoors.